This is Where the Waters Meet. I'm Christina, and we're here today at the Haggerty Museum of Art at Marquette University with Roy F. Staub. Yes. And his exhibition, Prairie Ring. Why do you call this exhibition Prairie Ring? Uh, the, the Prairie Ring is uh, it's an installation here in the museum, first of all. Mm -hmm. And, and, and any, any, any kind of um, Installation in the museum has to be planned in advance. And I was working last year on a series of works using ellipses and ovals. And uh, uh, so when I got the nod to do this exhibition, I just carried on that series here in Milwaukee, or here for this installation in Milwaukee, on, on the series. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I look for an identification uh, to where I'm working. And, and, and Milwaukee is near the prairie. I want to use natural, I always use natural materials in my work, or mostly I use natural materials in my work in, in a rural si uh, situation. And since the reed sculptures were mainly set in rural locations in Milwaukee, uh, the exhibition is reed sculptures, natural materials, and, and I also wanted to use uh, things of the area to, for people to identify with. So, you're from Milwaukee originally? Yeah. Born right. in Milwaukee, educated in Milwaukee. But and then you went out to the rest of the world. When I finished school, I, I continued what I was studying. I went off to Europe. Mm -hmm. And perhaps should have went to New York, but I went to Europe instead. And all the things that I studied uh, in art history, uh, I went to see in Europe. I, I traveled extensively. Uh, in Europe, I, I, of course, went to England first, and France, and Italy, and... Uh, over to the Soviet Union and uh, over to Berlin and uh, into Scandinavia where I wove and, uh, and into Spain and North Africa. And why? that's four years. <laughs> that's four <laughs> that's years. That's a lot of years. <laughs> why, why? Why did you travel everywhere? You know, people often take it as a matter of course that, uh, but some artists don't travel at all. Some artists stay in one place and work there. But I mean, what I'm saying is, um, I know that, that many of your exhibitions, like it's the only one that I know of, that was done indoors. Is this the that's first right. one that's, that's done first one indoors? indoors yeah. The very first one. But before this, your other exhibitions that were made of natural uh, reeds are done in outside, outside sites. Yes, yes, yes. But like in Finland? Finland uh, was a commission uh, to do something, and uh, I wasn't sure that the reeds were there. And, and, but um, another artist was there a year before and suggested to a curator, this is a nice site for a temporary exhibition. And it was an arts festival, and they had enough courage to, to, to say, ah, uh, yes, something very fragile could be done. And we negotiated it, and they said, yes. But I didn't know there were reeds there. And, and then uh, a couple, oh, now we're in, in, in the Finland project, but a couple weeks before, uh, a couple months before I, I, I came over, uh, I had guests from Finland, a curator and, and, a, and a person in charge of education. And we, we walked along the Hudson East River, and he said, yes, there are reeds growing. But nobody knew exactly where they were and how tall they were mm -hmm. and what we were going to do. And then we, I got there and I met some other people and we talked, we looked and couldn't find anything. And then another artist, another photographer, uh, said, uh, yes, they're growing over on the other side in a small pond. And that pond seemed to be like a, a peat bog. And we found the tallest reeds growing there. It, not the same, as, the same way as in New York, but the same reeds as New York. Mm -hmm. And we had walked mm -hmm. out on this waterbed kind of thing to pick them. So uh, now we lost the point, but uh, <laughs> no, that's, uh, right. that's, that's part of the point. The, uh, well, the first question was, um, why did you travel to so many countries? I mean, was it something that you personally um, felt that you wanted to do to learn about about different? Um... I, I'm, I'm always curious to see what's on the other side, and I feel just growing up in Milwaukee, I had only one narrow viewpoint of what the world was like, and mm -hmm. and, and the books show you photographs. Mm -hmm. But photo I'm sorry, I have an exhibition of photographs here. <laughs> but the real work, the, the, the real architecture, the real things have, have a, a greater impact. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the environment, uh, uh, what's around the work, tells you about it. And uh, I'm always misconstrued because I, uh, I don't like to uh, plan so much ahead. That's baggage also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I, I was trying to get funding. I was, I'm interested in going to Japan to do something because I thought my way of working, uh, my method, my play of materials, the sensibility fits the tradition of Japan. So uh, someone in New York recently said, 
uh, call up Christo. He's going to do a project in Japan. Of course, I want to do the project in Japan and, and uh, be invited over there mm -hmm. because I can't afford to, the, the lifestyle there, the money style there, to travel over there. So I have to be invited by somebody to, to bring me there and to mm -hmm. do the work and have permission to do the work. Mm -hmm. And I call him and his wife answers the phone and she says, well, I, uh, we pay for all the things that we do ourselves. We don't get funded for it. Well, that's partially true. And she says, why don't you do what my husband does and do preparatory, preparatory drawings? And that's exactly what you said before. Don't talk to me until we're, we're, we're doing this interview because you're going to lose the freshness. And that's ex exactly so. I don't want to become dry and dull and bored. I want to do the work on the spot and I want to discover something while I'm good because I want to be interested in myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and that's, that's what I feel is very important in making art. And, and I, I don't want to repeat myself. I, want, I don't want to duplicate something. I want to everything. Uh, yes, I do find a technique and, and, and a, a technique that I feel I, ha I mean, these reads I've been doing 10 years now, and, and I have done other things in between, mm -hmm. but sometimes I want to go back because I felt that I, I'm not bored with it yet. I, I have not explored it to its potential. I have worked very far. I went, uh, there's a piece over here where I made the lines far too long. It was 58 feet long, and, and that was, so it's 23 feet in one unsupported straight line, and the line was wobbling, and I called it a tribute to Philip Guston because it became a little bit clumsy, a little bit ambiguous, and a little bit overextended. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not it's, saying Philip Guston was overextended, right. but some of his work's a little bit clumsy. But, but uh, you're saying that you yourself don't know what the work will be like until it's completed. No, I, I'm saying that when I start to do the work, I know what I'm going to do. You do? I but do. You, you I, know I, usually, what? usually I, well, we, we go back right to that, what, okay. what the Indian woman does every, every morning in front of her house. She draws this yantra, which is a, uh, a symbol of I don't know, what's the word, is it hope or good luck? Mm -hmm. or, good luck, Or, or, yeah. or, or, or uh, a good spirit for the day, maybe that's a better right, term for right. it. Yeah. And, and so I, I come to the site, I look at the site, I know what I did before, I know which piece I did before, and I know which piece, I mean, I don't want to repeat those, but some of those forms I liked, and, and so I, I, I would draw it in the sand, and I would look at the space, and it may take five minutes, it may take 10 minutes to resolve it. I mean, I won't do the geometry in its perfect way until I'm executing the piece. Japan. Of course, I want to do the project in Japan and, and uh, be invited over there mm -hmm. because I can't afford to, the, the lifestyle there, the money style there, to travel over there. So I have to be invited by somebody to, to bring me there and to mm -hmm. do the work and have permission to do the work. Mm -hmm. And I call him and his wife answers the phone and she says, well, I, uh, we pay for all the things that we do ourselves. We don't get funded for it. Well, that's partially true. And she says, why don't you do what my husband does and do preparatory drawings? And that's exactly what you said before. Don't talk to me until we're, we're, we're doing this interview because you're going to lose the freshness. And that's ex exactly so. I don't want to become dry and dull and bored. I want to do the work on the spot and I want to discover something while I'm good because I want to be interested in myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and that's, that's what I feel is very important in making art. And, and I, I don't want to repeat myself. I, want, I don't want to duplicate something. I want to, everything... Yes, I do find a technique, and, and, and a, a technique that I feel I, ha I mean, these reads I've been doing 10 years now, and, and I have done other things in between, mm -hmm. but sometimes I want to go back because I felt that I, I'm not bored with it yet. I, I have not explored it to its potential. I have worked very far. I went, uh, there's a piece over here where I made the lines far too long. It was 58 feet long, and, and that was, so it's 23 feet in one unsupported straight line, and the line was wobbling, and I called it a tribute to Philip Guston because it became a little bit clumsy, a little bit ambiguous, and a little bit overextended. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not it's, saying Philip Guston was overextended, right. but some of his work's a little bit clumsy. But, but uh, you're saying that you yourself don't know what the work will be like until it's completed. No, I, I'm saying that when I start to do the work, I know what I'm going to do. You do? I do. You, you I, know I usually, usually, we go back right to that, what, okay. what the Indian woman does every, every morning in front of her house. She draws this yantra, which is a, uh, a symbol of I don't know, what's the word, is it hope or good luck? Mm -hmm. or, good luck, Or, or, yeah. or, or, or uh, a good spirit for the day, maybe that's a better right, term for right. it. Right, yeah. and, and so I, I come to the site, I look at the site, I know what I did before, I know which piece I did before, and I know which piece, I mean, I don't want to repeat those, but some of those forms I liked, and, and so I, I, I would draw it in the sand, and I would look at the space, and it may take five minutes, it may take 10 minutes to resolve it. I mean, I won't do the geometry in its perfect way until I'm executing the piece. Mm -hmm. And then what I learned, mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I, I look for a basic central uh, way of feeling and response to my work. And I think maybe I, I work like uh, for the, how the Egyptians calculated the pyramid. So I use a string, a, a length of string, not a tape measure with numbers on it. Later, I measure it out because everybody wants to know what's the size of the piece. So I, I bring a tape measure down, or I measure the string someplace else. But I take a, a string, and I measure it out, and I fold it in half, and I found a half. Or I fold it in thirds, and it gives my third division because I'm in, interested in, in numbers and systems and geometry. It, it just happens that way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to calculate. Mm -hmm. I hate to calculate it. And that's how I do the pieces. Mm -hmm. I, I, I so, so your preparatory drawings are in your head by now? I do the sketch, and then it's in my head. Uh -huh. But I mean, it uh -huh. evolves. It's, it, right. it's, it, it's not intuitive. Right, because it's planned. It's planned, but it's not thoroughly planned. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and when the piece is being made, in most cases, it's right. And if it's wrong, I will change it to make it right, because mm -hmm. that's the challenge of an artist also. It has to be made right. Right, I understand, because okay. it's kind of like doing an interview like this. It's like, how will I know what I'll ask until I'm in the conversation? Because with each person, it would be different. Oh, yeah, yeah and it's that, that report. Kind of, yeah. Right, yeah. and it's got to be like that. And, and I could not make a pre-plan of it. I mean, I know I can read about the, about the person, or you know, I can get, gather um, information, or I can meet the person, I can get these senses. But then you never know until you're there at the moment. So, yeah, 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 yeah it makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense to me. Because, because it, it, it's, more spo it's spontaneous, it's original, it's right. on. It's natural. It's natural, yeah. right. And, right. And, and that's, that's what I'm looking for important. in my work, yeah. Right, right. Oh, okay, so I, well, I was just going to say it's, in, it's interesting. So how did you come to decide to do a piece indoors? You said you, you had talked to Dr. Curtis Carter. Mm -hmm. And, and so my original thought was that because you were doing a piece in, indoors that it would be preserved, but that's not true, is that you take it down. No, no, no. This is, I think this piece will last... Uh, Maybe 2,000 years. 2,000 years? Because if, if, it, if this museum, which has a perfect environment, and if they really respect what I would do... <laughs> well, then there could be no other exhibitions, I would think. Well, well there's, there's well. more rooms. And they're, and, and they're also talking about expanding this museum, I think. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I mean, this indoor piece is now set and dry. It's like a basket you would find in King Tut's tomb. Mm -hmm. It will not deteriorate any farther. It's dry and set. Mm -hmm. So it can, this could last forever. I mean, this is now in the in the vault, mm -hmm. well, say. and that's a, that's a kind of a problem because uh, that's a negative factor to the installation. As, as, as there's a negative factor to the, to the photographs, uh -huh. there is something that's lost when it's taken out of its environment and its sight. Mm -hmm. and, and the piece does the not move. The wind won't change the, right. uh -huh. And then I'm working inside the gallery here, and I, I, I ask for the walls to be dark blue for the contrast, and so you can, here we go, contrast, so you can see the work. Mm -hmm. And I worked in here building the piece four days in building the piece, and every day outside it was nice and sunny. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it's like that, this, now this becomes work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I had a job once in New York being a designer in the middle of a skyscraper, and I would go outside in the evening, and I realized it was a wonderful day outside, and I missed the life of the day. And that's what I like about summer, that's why, why, that's why I work outside. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, I work this piece is small, and, and, and I, had a, uh, I had a problem in compromising with my feeling. I have a sense that it has to be big. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as man or I can extend my body to work, I'm doing body art, mm -hmm. and I'm doing, this is called land art because it, becomes, uh, it relates to the environment and the land. And I'm extending myself as far as I can. And uh, there's all other factors involved in the work. But uh, so I compromised, and I, I, but I, I think for an exhibition of these photographs, this piece, in all its weaknesses, or because it's inside, it helps define what the photographs are. It gives yes. you a, a somewhat of an idea sense. of scale. Yeah, and, and that's that's important to the work. Right, and just to see the actual read is so different than to see it on a photograph. You know, yeah, well, but you see, you know, when I, when I when I proposed this exhibition, I had no idea the reeds were growing here. We can talk about the reeds for a moment. <laughs> uh, I, I thought I was going to drive back to New York and bring them back here, <laughs> which I could have done, and and uh, I did. I brought one back here when I flew here first, and and I I broke them three pieces and carried it on the plane, and I reassembled it here, and it went. It was too high for this space. And, and I, I didn't want to drive a thousand miles each way to bring them back. And I, I, 
I looked at the countryside here in Milwaukee. As we said in the beginning, why did I use reeds? Why did I call it prairie ring? And I wanted to use natural materials that grow around. Uh, I found the reeds growing <laughs> and, and in various places. And each time I stopped and picked them. And, and I, 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 uh, I brought them here and I, and I solved the problem. Hmm. The reeds are growing here. And I called someone else and said, uh, I, I want to use prairie grass. Where is the prairie grass? What is the prairie grass? And nobody could tell me what prairie grass is. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, I found mm -hmm. somebody living in Oconomowoc, and he said, he knew prairie grass. He said, this is prairie grass, and this will be ripe now, and that will be ripe now. And then I, I have a friend, Betty, Betty Cock, who works for the museum here, and I, I said, Betty, you know about prairie grass, because she's in, involved with plants and, and, and gardens and things like that. And, and she said, well, goldenrod is even prairie grass. So I grabbed the goldenrod that's in, right now in yellow flower, and there's white goldenrod. Is that golden? Or something of the same plant. And I was looking for smells because I wanted to bring, employ smells in this sterile environment of the gallery. And so that, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's part of the materials that I, uh, that's here, that's here. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked me about how the, the longest, uh, how long, the longest, I'll give you the longest piece of, of a reed sculpture is, is the piece that's situated over here. I made it at Storm King. It happened to be the biggest piece I made because it was made uh, at the edge of a mountain on the edge of the Hudson River and where I thought the reeds were growing from, from the lookout, because they, they built a road in the 30s uh, from West Point to a place called Cornwall on the Hudson, and it went around the face of the mountain, halfway up the mountain. Gorgeous view. The, the roads, it was one of these dangerous roads that serpentined around them. And I made it to be seen from the outlook on the mountain. And, and uh, so it, I made it large. <laughs> and uh, it, I, normally I work on sand, and this was mud. So I was working for eight days in a foot of, foot of mud. So there's a little track around the pieces I was making. It, and, and it was 70 by 120 feet. And talking about challenging nature and gods. But, it, but they were good to me because uh, the mountain protected from the north wind, which is always that strong wind when the fronts come down in the Hudson River Valley as well as here. And uh, what was bad about it is that uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt built the railroad system and his empire by destroying the whole Hudson River line. And, and both sides of the river have railroad tracks on it. So he was straightening out the river with railroad tracks. Hmm. But he left a little passage for the water to come in and out in this protected bay where I chose to work. And, and, and that's uh, in this little passage, the tide. Now, the whole Hudson River, which I research very much <laughs> to do work, uh, has a four and a half foot tide thereabouts every day, twice a day, up to down, up and down. And that, that brings things in and out. So it was like a rush of water coming in, a rush of water so coming out. Disgusting. And then with the reeds going up, up and down, it was like the, the mouth of a bell and whale, and it would filter mm -hmm. out. And the seaweed would come in and collect, and sometimes we'd break that front wall of the, of the sculpture. And I, I would come back periodically and repair it. But it lasted two and a half months. Two and a half months? Yeah. Hmm. So that, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that was... Uh, uh, that's longer than five hours. July, yeah. August, yeah. And, and into September. Yeah, much yeah. longer than five right, hours. Right, right. Yeah. And then I came back. Uh, I, I did the Hudson River Project in 1989. I got a grant from the New York State Council on the Arts. And I, I said I'll do six. I did nine sculptures. And I, uh, it was sponsored by the Woodstock Guild. You know, Great Woodstock Festival mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on my way up to, do, to exhibit, exhibit the photographs to top off uh, the grant uh, requirements and, and, and the project, I drove past all the sites I worked on. And I looked down, and there, there the site was perfectly clean, as if I never was there. And I was very happy. Hmm. I was very happy that I made my statement for two months or two and a half months, and now it was as before. The reeds all washed back to the river where, where they came from or because they came from by the river. They mm -hmm. dissolved in the river. Mm -hmm. they, they stopped at the bank where they belonged. So I didn't ruin anything. I, I feel I didn't ruin anything. Mm -hmm. And the site was pristine again. Mm -hmm. And if I want, uh, it's, it's, it's renewable. I can build there again. Mm -hmm. And as I go in the Hamptons, I go back to the same sites once in a while, every couple of years, and I do another piece. Because some of the, some of the situations are right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now I, I've been working at some of the same sites. Mm -hmm. I repeat, going to, I, I go to the sites periodically. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're familiar sites, I know the materials are there, 
And, and also, that's part of the convenience of working. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I don't always have a car to lug things around. And I don't mm -hmm. want to walk so far. And also, when the things grow nearby, they belong there. It's, they become part of the site. Mm -hmm. it's, it's related. I mean, one of the photographs there have, have the birds, uh, tree house swallows, that, were, uh, that, that, that migrate al along the East Coast uh, in September when I like to work. And, and they, go from the, they went from the reeds to my sculpture and back and forth in a big flock. Of course, on, on this uh, sculpture, I mean, I waited three weeks for the wind to become calm. It was the day it was calm when the, the birds were migrating. And I hushed them away and I started swearing at them. And the birds wouldn't listen. I guess they don't know those words. <laughs> Polite birds. And, and uh, they, they were destroying the sculpture in front of me. And uh, there was nothing to do but photograph it while the birds were there, and the birds became part of it. And also it created more of an interest to this photograph. Uh, well, the sculptures don't last anyhow very long. All right, let, let nature take its course quicker than I want it, and in front of my eyes. It's a positive statement as well. Like life. Like you know, life. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Things yeah. happen in life, yeah. Um, so oh, oh, wait, no, I didn't finish, I didn't finish. Okay. I didn't finish. all right, finish. Uh, because, uh, so I worked periodically in the same place, and I gave, uh, I had a couple exhibitions in the Hamptons on my sculpture, uh, on my photographs of my sculpture, so, and, and the, the newspaper out there was very cooperative, the Southampton Press, with the first article about me, Mary Cummings, a nice person, and she came in the water in her little bikini, this 45-year-old woman, and a good camera, better camera than I had, and, and uh, that worked real well, and I got publicity and all that. And then I gave a lecture at the East Hampton Center for Contemporary Art in 1988. And uh, then I came back periodically to do work, always in the end of summer. And, and, the, and the last time I did this body of work up in Amagansett, I, I, I announced to everybody again about the sculpture taking place. And all these people still wouldn't come and, and experience what I was doing. So I'm trying to, I, I was disappointed that the audience was so hard to come by. And, then, mm -hmm. and even some of the people who are aware of art would say, this is too hard to come to. But it wasn't hard to come to. It's mm -hmm. just the idea mm -hmm. of getting off that soft chair like we're sitting on now, or getting out of that car, and sort of experience what life's about. Mm -hmm. Well, also it was amazing kind of when, think about where we live now in this day and age. We have heating, we live in houses in the city, we hate bugs and all that kind of thing. And, and when I started building this, I brought the boxes of, of uh, prairie grass, which had a great smell. This place was full of smell. But everybody in the office was kind of complaining. They weren't accustomed to the smell of nature. I mean, uh, we're, we're so alienated from, from what nature is. Uh, I, 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 I suffer from the idea. I learned. I, so, I learned how important it is. I mean, uh, it's like going to a supermarket and having to select that, that one kind of apple, that one kind of potato, that, that one piece of meat if you eat meat, and, 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 and that's the limit. Our, our, our diet, our way of life has been so narrow. And that's also another reason about going to Europe, because they, they, they eat these terrible things that, that artichokes, oh my God. The first artichoke I ate, I threw away the heart. I didn't know how to eat it. And then someone showed me how to do it. I learned how to drink wine with meals and, and, and eat this runny Canterbury cheese that has this great taste. But in Milwaukee, I never knew anything about it. And I'm not talking about nouvelle cuisine and, and yuppie mm -hmm. behavior. I'm just talking about opportunities to do more things because, mm -hmm. or going and eating Arab food with your hands. Right, right. I mean, poor Queen Elizabeth, who couldn't take off her gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but you, 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 you have this center tagine, and you open it up, and it's a yes. camel. I mean, a great, a great camel. I mean, it's a little tough if you eat it like a steak. But uh, when it was ground up with this, with the, uh, the tige of, um, of, of the artichoke, that's the stem. And you boil that, and it has great taste. And, 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 and you go to, in, into the store, and all you eat is, is the, the head. Mm -hmm. Well, there's more parts to that. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's like eating frog legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there are extensions that, that are not normally eaten that, are, that taste wonderful. Our culture is very limited. How sophisticated we are, and, and as isolated as we are, and alienated as we are to nature. So, uh, working in nature, okay, so, so it's not in the norm of the gallery, but, uh, but this, is, this is where I, this is, the, for me, the full experience. Uh, my work is, is out in nature, it becomes harmonious in nature. Because mm -hmm. there, that gives you all the little, little things around it. That's preparing you to see the work, that is giving the contributions. When, when the sun is right, when the water is right, 
and the piece is in there and right for me, it's gorgeous. And then it's just when I photograph it. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't find a photographer to sit with me all this time. Mm -hmm. And I, sometimes I'm there and, and, and I, I wait for the light to be right. Sometimes the light's not right. I, 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 I come there early in the morning and, and uh, the, the weather, the front comes through. Well, that I can't control. But some mornings, it is right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I can, I, I can enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, w I would think, that I would say, though, that I would think that to have something like this in a museum would begin to invite people to come out to nature. Exactly. Because maybe they wouldn't be as frightened. Isn't that strange? That just to put this here would, would maybe uh, make people not as frightened of the experience. I agree with you. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. but, but, you see, uh, I'm showing, showing you and them that this experience can happen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's part of... Uh, part of the statement. I mean, uh, and also it, 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 it shows you that there has to be respect to what is there in nature, and nature has to be respected. I mean, it, it's, it's this crisis that we are uh, of no more air and all this ozone, and that's, that's a problem. Uh, you have to remember things take time. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, effort, and, a certain effort. Effort and process, and, and that's something to do with quality of life. It's, uh, right, I, 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 have, I have the nature, I, I, I know how to sew. If I have a hole in my sock, uh, I, I will, will repair Mended, that sock yeah. instead of throwing it away. Why? Because everything is sewed together anyhow. And, and it, it's maybe shoddy because we're shipping it over to some place where we're exploiting someone's labor, where it's made cheaper and fast. And believe me, those, those people are working fast for, for their low, low, low yeah. thing. And, and, and that, I, I went to Marshall Fields and, and I think this shirt is, is, a, is a nice new shirt that I, that I got for this exhibition. I think it's made in Taiwan or, or some oriental country, which is exploited because they work cheaper. And I don't know what the quality of their life is over there because I'm not over there, but I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. And then they say, American made? Well, uh, maybe Americans should maybe take a little bit more time. Oh, that's a terrible political statement. <laughs> you take time, take, find a little love in what you do. Mm -hmm. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be under pressure, though. And, and, and uh, there's something about, again, time. When I worked here in the museum, uh, the negative factor is the people start work here at, at 7 or 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning, and they finish at 4.30, and it's out. The security alarm goes on, and everybody's gone. And as an artist working on an installation, it was the same thing. It's, it's either come 7 to 4.30, and you couldn't work any longer because the alarm system was on. And when I'm working in nature, there's certain things that have to be considered. It takes X amount of time to put it up, it takes X amount of time to get some of the horizontal reeds wet in water and put it up, and then they have to be set in place and bound in place, and it takes that much time. Mm -hmm. And then the piece is ready, and then you have to wait for the sun to be ready. And I'm dependent upon all those natural factors and the sun factors in the work, and that's called agrarian time. Agrarian means agricultural time. Like when the farmer got up to, to plant the seeds, when it rained, they grew, when it rained, sometimes he couldn't work, so he sat in the house and waited until the rain stopped, and he went out there again because he was dependent upon those two things to work together to get his crop. And, and that's the sense of time. It's not running here and running there, although uh, that makes things convenient in uh, our civilization and our time. Mm -hmm. But th that necessarily is not my time. When I'm tired, I want to sleep. If I'm out late at night, I want to sleep the next morning. If I come to work, I feel terrible. My body says I feel terrible. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and mm -hmm. it's not saying that I should not go out at night. I mean, I want to have that freedom to do so. But that, the clock something is something I don't want to watch. Mm -hmm. But it's just a thing of convenience. Mm -hmm. but, but making art in nature, uh, I am at the mercy of the elements, so I'm an Aquarian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I can tell from your work that you love it. I do, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been Where the Waters Meet on Christina, and we were talking today with Roy F. Staub at the Haggerty Museum of Art at Marquette University. And thank you. And thank you very much.